Alibaba has been well known for its night view, high size, and being a convenient trading port connecting countries around the world. It attracts visitors and companies from all over the world, which makes Hong Kong continue to prosper. Yet, has, you, has any one of you been aware of what is inside the water? Due to the rapid development along the harbour, we seem to have given up on the possibility that precious marine species may live underneath the busy water. But the discovery of coral in the distant Victoria Harbour may change your mind. Hong Kong used to be a fishing village, and the harbour was not as busy as now until the British colonisation. Ever since then, the Victoria Harbour became a useful trading port as it locates in the centre of Asia, which makes countries around the world to stop by and transport goods into China and other nearby inland countries. More than 200,000 vessels for trading and tourism travels to the harbour each year, making it become one of the busiest and most famous harbours in the world. As prosperity and development grow along the two sides of the harbour, the harbour suffers from serious damage. The sewage and rubbish from industrial sites that goes into the water, and most importantly, the reclamation project being done along the harbour to make use of a small area for the maximum development, has harmed the harbour by worsening the water quality that fish species no longer stay in the harbour. Reclamation is highly associated with our city as we have limited land resources here in Hong Kong. It seems to have become the only option for the government to take. The, the water pollution and damage to marine habitat by reclamation has caused damage not only to the Victoria Harbour but also to many other waterfronts. Some people claim that the recent discovery of corals reflects the effectiveness of the mitigation strategies such as water treatment plants. We can see that there are improvement in water quality by water treatment plants installed by the government. But to what extent can these mitigation technologies be effective in restoring the marine diversity? Are these possible ways in balancing development and environmental conservation? To further study the adequacy of mitigation technology on relieving the damage to the marine life, we shall evaluate the strategies being used right now in Hong Kong and other countries. It is doubtless that reclamation can effectively increase our land supply within a short period of time. However, it is detrimental to our marine habitat and ecosystem. Habitats of marine species will be directly taken away as we are simply turning sea area into land. What is more, the silt generated during the dredging of seafloor is harmful to the entire ecosystem by lowering the oxygen content and directly harming the marine population. Two of the existing mitigation technologies used in Hong Kong include water quality improvement and construction of marine parks. The government has noted the worsening of water quality due to large-scale reclamation scheme along the harbour. Water treatment plants are built in Stonecutter Island. Sewage will be transported to the plants through underground pipes and is purified before discharging to the harbour. Now, the harbour area treatment scheme has gone through two phases and an improvement in water quality was shown. Bacteria level and level of organic matters were reduced significantly after phase 1 of the scheme. So, has the scheme been able to create a better habitat for species to repopulate? Does the discovery of soft coral in the harbour show a revival of marine species, reflecting the effectiveness of water treatment scheme in mitigating reclamation impact? Well, the discovery of coral in Victoria Harbour is an interesting observation and I think the, the press was very eager to take this discovery and turn it into a positive story that that the water quality in Victoria Harbor has improved to a degree that sensitive species like corals are able to reoccupy those habitats. Now as a scientist I'm naturally skeptical so I might ask the question were the corals there before? Uh, maybe they simply weren't discovered uh, previously. So it's hard to prove that corals are repopulating these areas of Victoria Harbor that may not have been uh, sufficiently surveyed before by a, a coral expert. The other thing that I know is that the species of coral is called, uh, well the genus is Dendronephia. It's a, it's a soft coral species that's rather common to Hong Kong and it actually does very well uh, consuming particulate organic matter that's in the water column. So conditions in Victoria Harbor might be good for this coral to survive. 
but other sensitive species like the hard corals, the corals that can build coral communities in Hong Kong, I doubt that you would find any of those species in Victoria Harbour even today. Another strategy adopted by the government is the construction of Marine Park, which is a sea area with restriction on boat speed and fishing practice. The government has been proposing an area in Tong Chung for reclamation and a marine park area is located near the site in the hope of protecting endangered marine species. The restriction of boat speed and fishing practice is to minimize the damage to marine species in the marine park by human activities. Yet, environmentalists are generally skeptical towards its effectiveness. Hong 海洋公園放在另一個位置,一定不要來我海洋填海的位置 You can't really do much to mitigate those impacts uh, and we're talking about an area that is critically important for certain charismatic species like the Chinese white dolphin. You can't simply make a marine park and, and invite all the dolphins to swim over there. Um, and then at the same time take away a very large chunk of their habitat. It doesn't work that way. And, and these animals don't, don't understand or, or we can't notify them that some areas are safe and others are no longer safe. There are other strategies adopted by foreign governments in mitigating impacts of reclamation during the construction. For instance, strategies need not be advanced technology, but to adapt to the nature. One example of, uh, from overseas that I think is uh, an important lesson it comes from Australia, where a certain development project that was happening near sensitive coral reef habitats was uh, the developer was charged with making sure that there was no negative impacts of sedimentation on the Great Barrier Reef. So instead of, of trying to come up with new technologies or installing these silt curtains which are very ineffective, they instead adopted a policy that was, behave was behavioral. So they, used it, they changed their behavior based on the uh, conditions. And what I mean by that is, is that uh, they would not uh, do the activities that created sediments during times where the conditions for sediment transport and, and impact were very high. So for example, if the, if the sediment content of the seawater was naturally very high, then the construction activities would have to be limited because they didn't want to add to the problem. Overall, we can predict slight relief in marine ecology after reclamation by the above-mentioned strategies. However, the exact effects has never been scientifically assessed. One of the problems or challenges that we have is that there, when these mitigation measures are put in, for example, an artificial reef or some other kind of substrate, there is no follow-up to find out whether or not the marine life or the objective, whatever that is, from the reclamation, restoration, there's no follow-up to work out or assess whether or not that mitigation has been effective or not. And the problem with that is that if you don't really know whether mitigation is effective or not, then in the future, if you decide to do it again, you don't actually know whether it's going to work. From what we have learned about the impact of reclamation on marine ecology, reclamation should be our last resort. To increase our land supply, we can consider other options which are more readily available and with less negative impact on our environment. Why 
，呢、这個第一個原來源啦。第二個來源咧就叫中地，中地就講緊咧喺元朗啊、新界啊、大埔都有嘅，就係嗰啲地方咧就係、是、私人擁有，不過已經係好乸渣。乸渣係咩意思呢？即係個土地污染咗啦。有啲廢棄回收場啊、停車場啊、消船倉咁樣嗰啲，嗰啲可以攞部分嚟到去發展。From the issue of reclamation, it seems that the environmental harm cannot be fully compensated by mitigation projects. And what we need to do for balancing development and environmental conservation would be the thing that we should have done before the development. So, is there any way for us to have both development and environmental conservation at the same time? 如果去到一個發展嘅中後期咧，先去諗呢啲咧，其實係跌入咗一個密室度，係冇辦法去跳出嚟。咁所以要早少少去諗嘅咧，呢啲問題咩咧？就係、是、究竟一個城市咧，大家點樣先開心 ？What we should consider is the emphasis of our development. Should we be stressing on economy all the time, or focusing more on the individual's well-being like happiness? Moreover. Our population growth also affects the capacity of the city, affecting our development model. 我所謂咧，啊，係一個叫即係願景嘅共識啊。我哋其實未人有噶，或者政府咧未曾未曾領引導社會去討論呢個共識嘅啊。咁就如果喺呢個共呢個願景咧係未有共識嘅情況底下咧，就冒冒然咧就話要去做一啲咁大型嘅填海嚇，特別而家最大型嘅當然就係、是。人工島啦嚇，即係喺九龍島同埋大嶼山之間嘅人工島啦。咁嘅話，誒、呃，我哋連呢個基本問題，即係呢啲誒所謂大型嘅填海，究竟為何而建同埋為誰而建啊？呢啲咁根本問題都未解答嘅話咧，我相信咧就好難製造一個社會共識嘅。就呢個就唔係淨係話一個環境或者生態嘅問題啦，而係我哋想要一個乜嘢社會嘅問題。However, it is still possible to strike a balance between development and environmental conservation. To achieve this, we would need advanced planning and creativity. But how do we do it? This is also a need for creativity. I always give an example from Hong Kong. It's a very famous example. For example, like the Longyuan Sea, it's the biggest sea in Hong Kong. At that time, about 10 years ago, the sea was a sea. 係喜羅馬洲之線嗰陣時咧，就本來咧就話要喺上面鏟過去嚇，破壞咗個濕地。咁結果當然有好多環保團體反對啦，咁都有政府自己都即係同意嚇，就放棄咗個計劃啊，就用多啲錢啊，但係咧就喺地底穿過，咁啊保護到內源嘅濕地啊。咁你可以睇到啦，嗯，個濕地可以保護到，落馬洲之線都可以起到啊，冇令到發展有咩阻滯嘅啊。而事實上咧，嗰、那個誒、呃、生態嘅功能咧，啊、呃、都仲好咗添嚇。經過咁多年嘅大家嘅努力咧，啊即係嗰度嘅，譬如誒揾、呃、到嘅雀啊，從二百幾種，而家今年係超過三百種啊咁樣。咁所以只要我哋願意用一啲創意嘅話咧，我哋完全咧係可以令到發展同埋保育咧係誒即係並駕齊驅嘅。Imagine Hong Kong is a big pie. When we are developing the city. We are gradually taking away our limited resources, taking away slices of the pie. Eventually, the pie will be gone. Therefore, we should think of innovative strategies to carry out our development plan with the least possible amount of resources each time, so as to develop our city alongside environmental conservation. With creative ideas and overseas technologies, Hong Kong can indeed be a leading example of sustainable development.